and I'd now like to introduce Leanne Beaton. Hello. My name is Leanne and I'm also known as Lithia and I'm about size. I was born with a condition known as atherogryphosis, which causes muscles to not de develop properly and stiff care of joints. Consequently, I cannot use things and so I've adapted to using my mouth to do most things, including cleaning and photography. From a young age, I've always had an interest in both nature and art, so naturally the two have combined. I often use my work to raise awareness about different species, to educate, to encourage people to support con conservation projects. I also use my work to educate on the abilities of disabled people, because all too often we judge people based on appearance and assume that they're incapable of following the chats. And through my work, I'd like to change that. I want to I wanted to understand my favourite subjects in more detail, so in 2009 I completed my honours degree in Applied Animal Behaviour and Training. It was during this time that students were given the amazing opportunity to go to Africa. Raised on wildlife documentaries like Bat in Burundi Cat Diary, travelling to Africa for me has always been an aspiration. To experience the wildlife and the culture first hand and painting it would be a dream come true, but unfortunately, because the only package available at the time involved camping, it was unsuitable for someone with my needs as a disabled person to attend. However, anyone who knows me will tell you that I am fiercely determined. So when I was told that such a trip was impossible for me, I just said, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to find a way to make it happen. And this is where my project began. My first plan was what I'd like to what I'd like to get from the experience. To study the wildlife, to observe truly wild behaviours, capture these amazing moments on film and in paintings, and then one so called exhibitions highlighting how amazing these animals really are and why they deserve our protection and support. I initially approached major travel companies, which most told me it couldn't be done, explaining the things I needed to travel would be difficult to arrange in a third world country, especially in the wilder areas. I was told I was being unrealistic, I was told to choose a different country, and one even said that they would try to help but then put in £20,000. <laughs> a couple of projects all together said we'll call you when we find out more and never did. This experience got me wondering how many people with disabilities have tried to do the same, been told they couldn't, and missed out because they believed that what these major companies were telling them was true. This project all of a sudden became a much bigger thing. It was no longer just about me and wildlife, but I needed to do it to show others in my position that it was possible. <coughs> Not being one to give up easily, I took to Google, and after a lot of searching, I finally found a small selection of specialist companies for disabled, Many of these companies were still unsuitable, basic equipment like hoists which to use to safely lift me out of my wheelchair were unavailable, along with electricity to charge my wheelchair and pressure mattress. I began to wonder where, whether any companies out there could enable someone like me to go to the wilds of Africa, and that was when I discovered Floating Counter Safaris. This company has gone above and beyond my expectations, ensuring everything I need is in place for when I travel. My only issue now is funding. With the specialist equipment I require, combined with the fact that I need two carers to go with me, I was quoted £12,250 for 12 days. It's a massive difference from the 20000 but still out of my price range. And so my travel plan would show up not only now will I photograph the wildlife, but I've decided to document myself too. From flying in the aeroplanes, travelling through the country and accommodate, the accommodation we stay in, I will show the whole adventure from start to finish because I want to show people what exactly is involved in travelling as a person with special needs. Things cannot change if people don't know about them and the thing is, if you're fully able and have never had to face these hurdles, the chances are you've probably even never thought about it. Not because you don't care, but simply because you don't need to. So with that in mind, I plan to show everyone in the hope of making a change, not just travelling abroad, but also within the UK too. The project, entitled Fair Feathers and Wild Endeavours, or Project Africa, 
finally began to evolve into an idea, from an idea into something that was actually possible. We have since spent every opportunity travelling throughout the UK to various events, from motorcycle rallies and Comic Con, to zoological facilities, schools and museums. From Wall Street markets to London exhibitions, my philosophy is how fun will travel. <laughs> This alone has been a huge experience for me. Throughout my travels, I have met some truly amazing people and animals. At these events, I have taken live marketing demonstrations, exhibitions, fundraising, and educational talks on both wildlife conservation and disability awareness, with emphasis to disability rather than disability. I have educated the public on and various venues, including local wildlife parks in Hull on disability access. I have helped train animals to be more comfortable around wheelchairs and I have carried with the rides. I have done talks with children of all ages and encouraged them to paint with their mouths. In this time, I have come to realise that even modern countries like ours are not as accessible as we'd like to imagine. Affordable hotels with specialist equipment are few and far between. And even our own disability services seem to lack a very basic understanding of what it is to live a normal life. Despite my disability, I want to live a full life and be as independent as possible. Yet up until two and a half years ago, I didn't have those opportunities because I wasn't allowed the care I needed to function. At 27 years old, the times I got up, went to bed, and even went to the toilet were all still being dictated for me. The amount of time I could spend painting or out with friends was also restricted, and my grandmother was expected to care for my needs, filling in the gaps where carers went and at that point, she was 79 years old. I was told that if she was ever unable to care for me, I could be placed into a care home because it's cheaper. And the fact is, the value of someone's life should never come down to money, but it also often does. For years, we fought for the right for me to live the life the way I want and stay in my home. Two and a half years ago, we got the help. With the help and support, of family and friends, we won and I've got 24-7 care. I now aim to both create and educate to show that with enough determination you can do whatever you want and to show those who finally got it with care what is actually possible and what can be achieved. When given the correct resources, disabled people can greatly contribute to society. Regardless of your ability, race, gender, at the end of the day we're all just human. I am still currently fundraising for Project Africa and to date we now have £6,229. We are now officially over the halfway mark and the support I have gained from this project is truly amazing. This is what I love about Paul, the sense of community. When I was 18 months old we all fundraised for my first wheelchair and now years later I ask for all of your help again and as yet you haven't failed me. These are probably, there are probably some of you in this very audience who have attended my events, helped us fundraise, and so to all of you, I'd like to say a massive thank you. Not only for monetary donations, but also to those people behind the scenes, my assistants who have gone above and beyond, my friends who have volunteered their time, those who have allowed us to use their venues, musicians and artists who have given their time to perform, and my grandma, who has supported all of my crazy ideas since time began. <laughs> you are all truly amazing people. We still have a long way to go, but there's no doubt in my mind that I'll get there. We have more events planned in the coming months. So be sure to follow Lippy out on Facebook, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you for listening. <laughs>